Alex, we, we've all from, you know, obviously we, we've talked a little bit here and there over the last few months, but I'm almost kicking myself that I didn't see this coming because Mike Bobo gets the job. Colin Hill immediately follows. And it's so funny because my first thought in my head was, okay, Ryan's your starter. Um, I'm thinking Ryan's your starter. I thought Luke Doty was going to be QB too. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, Colin Hill's going to be a guy. He's battled a lot of injuries. He wasn't very good at Colorado State. Very average numbers, whatever. But he'll come in, be a nice veteran presence for Halinski and Doty. And he's going to be there to kind of bring those guys along. Kind of like in the NFL when they've got a veteran right. backup. And he's, he's going to bring the starter along. And well, he I look looks like Charlie Whitehurst, so it makes total sense. <laughs> well, he, he's like either Charlie Whitehurst or Steven Garcia 2.0. I don't really know yet. But um, <laughs> I, I think back, though, and I'm like, I can't believe I didn't see the writing on the wall because it was so interesting how this offseason, how this summer evolved. You know, I started hearing just kind of these random rumors like, hey, man, Colin Hill's looking pretty good. I think Colin Hill's realistically battling for the starting job like and I was thinking to myself okay maybe this is just message board madness maybe it's just fans trying to hype up the backup you know that happens a lot okay and I said at the beginning of of fall camp one of my big storylines is we're either going to find out if all of that was just the hype train was for not or is there some substance to this Colin Hill hype sure enough we're talking here on game week Colin Hill is your starting quarterback and again I kick myself because I'm like, man, I should have saw this coming. I mean, if you really thought – you really sit and think about it, Mike Bobo's not going to bring in his guy to ride the bench. I mean, what I feel like had to happen was – and you can, you know, interject whenever, but I feel like what had to happen, Mike Bobo got the quarterback job. And when he got it, he was very critical of Holinsky's mechanics and stuff like that, extremely cr- critical. But I think what had to happen, Mike Bobo gets the job, he sits down, he watches film of Ryan Holinsky last year, and he had to say to himself, you know what? I got a guy that can give this guy a run for his money. No doubt. My guy can come in here. He knows my system. He knows my playbook. He knows my scheme, my verbiage, everything, like the back of his hand. And I think with his skill set, he can come in here and, and give this guy some hell and maybe take his job away from him. I mean, what does it say to you that Colin Hill was named QB1? You know, obviously being a Mike Bobo disciple, you know, at Colorado State, he takes the job. What's that say to you? that it's not willing to evolve. Right. Ultimately, is what it says to me. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, you, I mean, it, it, it makes total sense if you like look back on it, like you said, because you've got this kind of shortened camp situation, you got a shortened spring practice situation, and so you've got somebody walking in there who already knows offense, mm-hmm. knows what the calls are, knows what formations are, knows and like you, where to look and on people, everything. You don't and you can't, you can't under, like people, I think, maybe don't understand like how important that is because they're like, I've seen comments, you know, obviously the, the reaction on social media has been very, very mixed, like I expected. And I've seen people saying, oh, I mean, what was Ryan doing the last seven months? He can't, you know, he, he couldn't study the playbook. I'm like, dude, you, you got to think about like, the, you got to think about like the reps too, like yeah. all the reps, like actually being on the field, doing it, making the calls, being in the huddle. Like I told people Ryan Holinsky was drinking water of a fire hose and he was de facto a, a true freshman all over again. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it's it, and especially like if you're going to run some sort of pro style set where you're making changes at the line based on defensive fronts and things like that. If he already knows what that's supposed to be based on all of those looks walking in there and you got Luke Ryan learning from zero. I mean, that's a tough ask for anybody mm. unless un- unless they unless they are just wildly more talented mm. than he was. But again, you know, I don't know. We'll, we'll know more Saturday about like kind of what they're asking him to do and what that's going to look like. So, you know, we'll, we'll see, but I, it feels a little bit like a horse and pony show to me. Like, yeah, we're going to open this competition up, but like everybody in the background knows what's yeah. going on here, which is really not all that dissimilar from the head man bringing <laughs> in somebody he knows and trusts right. from somewhere else. And yeah. same thing with, you know, bringing in, Oh, how many offensive coordinators was that ago? <laughs> Probably guy three. From Duke? Uh, guy from Duke. Um, was OC. Oh, was Kurt Roper. Florida. Yeah, Kurt Roper. Yeah, yeah no different Roper. than you know bringing in Kurt Roper. So mm. it makes sense. Fits. It fits with our teams. Yeah, it, it it really does. When you really think about it, it really does. I one of the things that's been kind of I, I've sort of laughed at a little bit because again the reaction's been very very mixed and there's been some people that. I, like, I understand where they're coming from in a sense because I think the biggest thing is people want to be able to latch on to QB1, say this is our guy. And when you think about Ryan Holinsky, his story, what he's been through, his family stuff, family, you know, we all get that. I understand why people 
have mixed feelings about it. But what I've said is this. You're an SEC school. They're always recruiting your replacement. 24-7, your replacement is being recruited at this very moment. Like, that, that's what they're doing. If you don't like competition, there are other schools you can go to. Now, I've tried to really just spin it as a positive. Like, dude, it's a great thing. When's the last time we had a true healthy quarterback competition? Like, we just genuinely had two guys going at it for Carolina. It's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, we, yeah. Because Jake Bentley, for the most part, just kind of had that job, and it, it really didn't feel like it. I mean, it was basically if Jake Bentley's healthy, he is our starter. Um, but what makes me laugh, Alex, is everybody – you know, there's a lot of people that, like, want to play the victim card and feel bad. And I'm like, where were y'all when Steve Spurrier was the head coach? When dudes are getting yanked every other play. Did you feel bad for Blake Mitchell? Did you feel bad for Garcia or Chris Smelly, God forbid? Did you feel bad yeah. for those guys? I mean, like, it's just the nature of the position. Because I'm one – people all – you know, people love to ask me, Chris, who do you think should be the starter? Who do you want to be the starter? My simple response is this. Whoever wins us games, I genuinely don't care whether it's Colin – whether it's Luke, whether it's Ryan, whether it's Dak. I don't care if it's Jay Yurick. I really don't give a damn. Just go win a football game. Go beat Tennessee. And in a year where Will Muschamp and Mike Bobo I – mean, Mike Bobo's not a stupid guy. He understands this. <clears throat> that he's, on, he's on limited time right now. He's on a one-year lease. And yeah. I think, you know, even in a season where we both agreed, I don't think Carolina's going to shell out of pocket unless some big booster, wherever you are, if you're listening to me, if you come out 13 mil out of your pocket, I'm not – whatever, you do what you want. But – Realistically, it's a big year either way. It's a pivotal year just for the program, for the progress of the program. Because if they have a bad year and he comes back, it's almost going to be impossible for them, for them to dig themselves out of that hole. I mean, it just is. So, I don't, I don't blame the coaches for playing the guy who's the veteran who they feel like gives them the best chance to win. Like, I understand why they named Colin the starter. 100%. If he knows the system, it's because kind of what we were talking about earlier just with the leadership thing, the other biggest – Part of all of this is trust. Yeah. Like, do you trust that guy to go out there and execute it the way that you think he should? Mm. And if that is higher, if the variable isn't high enough between athletic ability and skill and that trust, trust is going to win. Unless yeah. this, unless that athletic variability is way up here and you're just like, well, if he screws something up, we'll get 15 yards anyway, mm. which is not Ryan. And, mm. you know, if that's equal, this is going to win. Yeah, now, exactly, exactly. And that's what I said all offseason is that, you know, and if you watch film, Colin Hill can spin it. Like, I don't know if you've watched any. He's not a bad player. He, he can spin it. I, I know he wasn't oh, good at Colorado State. <laughs> you, you have to think he's going to be playing on the best team he's ever been on, for sure. Oh, for sure. Most talent he's ever had around him. I mean, the dude can spin it a little bit, for sure. And, yeah, I, I said that all offseason that, you know, if all things are equal, because – you know, it's just so funny to see the Colin Hill slander from some Carolina fans. I'm like, listen, if Ryan Holinsky was just that much better of a player, playbook be damned, he'd be the starter. I mean, they're not going to throw a guy out there that just cannot play. You know what I mean? Correct. So, all things being equal, if you say, hey, these guys' throwing abilities are equal, their they're poise, their pocket awareness, everything, that, their footwork, everything that goes into being a quarterback, well, the guy that knows the playbook better is going to win the job. I mean, it's just a given. It's a given. Time. So, like I said, I think, I think you're right. I think it comes back to that trust. And I think also the way the schedule sit, sets up this year, I think if it's a normal season and you, you open with Coastal and you play ECU and you have Mizzou week three, I think Ryan might be the starter. But it's just the simple fact that there's no wiggle room. I mean, Tennessee's going to bring it at you week one. You yep. know Florida's going to bring it at you week two. So you got to have the guy in there that gives you – would you rather have the guy that you're going to run – 70 percent of the playbook with or 100 you know what i mean like you, 100. It's, you it's know, 100 even because because so. even running 100 percent of the playbook i don't expect this offense to be some juggernaut but you're really going to put yourself behind the eight ball if you you can't even run your entire offensive set correct yeah no absolutely and that's that that's all it is at the end of the day like the dispersion and the talent and the athletic ability was not high enough to outweigh the trust factor and so all things being equal you send the guy in there that's going to do it the right way the way that you want it done yeah for sure. I mean, it, it, it'll be interesting to see it play out because I'll, I'll be interested to see what is the leash like for Colin Hill because Mike Bobo and Will Muschamp made it very clear. This is Colin's game. You know, we're not going in this game thinking, hey, we're going we're gonna to swap him in and out. And I'm really glad to hear them say that, Alex, because a quarterback competition is great. But my, Will Muschamp's not Steve Spurrier, and neither is Mike Bobo. And, hey, when you have Coach Spurrier, hey, I'll never forget the game against Arkansas where he literally switched out Garcia and Smelly every other play that entire game. And Carolina won that football game. I think it was 08. 08 was that game. Arkansas, Jared Cook had the long touchdown 
Um, yeah. But, yeah, but he'd, yeah. he'd switch guys out, whatever. Spurrier can get away with it. Like, I, I'm, I'm really glad to hear this is going to be Collins' game because quarterback competition is great. Quarterback controversy could be bad, could be very bad. This team has enough problems, enough issues, enough questions. Having a quarterback controversy and then you could have some division in the locker room and it's just like – it's just not something you want to deal with in a season like this.